When it comes to paracord and survival techniques, most people think of using it to make slings, tourniquets, snares, or even shelters. Those are all legitimate uses, and there are even more when it comes to storing and hauling items, whether it be taking some paracord and using it to make a, a snare or using it to store your gear up in a tree. There are a lot of uses, but there are a lot of uses when it comes to survival techniques that people don't talk about. In this new segment, I'm going to talk about using paracord for survival and some of the not so common things you can and can't do. I plan on talking about them, testing them, and debunking or proving them out to show that paracord is more than just a cool craft item that a bunch of posers and wannabe doomsday preppers wear. So stay tuned. Let me start off and explain why I'm doing this. Over the past few weeks, I've had dads at the scout meetings and campouts and some people in Reddit uh, forums that I'm on talk about paracord and how limiting it is. One person even said, other than say, pulling and storing gear, what good is it? Now, I'm not a doomsday prepper. I have a brother that kinda is, but I I'm not anything like that. And I was able to rattle off at least a dozen uses not related to medical use. And when I say medical use, I'm talking a sling, I'm talking a tourniquet, things like that. The people I were with actually were kind of shocked. It got me thinking, how many people really do not know all of the things that we can do with paracord? So in our first installment, let's talk about paracord and shoes. And I'm just talking your common tennis shoe, or even a hiking boot. Paracord is a great replacement for shoelaces. So here is one for my boot. And then I have this, this flat standard one in my tennis shoe. Whether it's your sneakers or your boots or even dress shoes, unlike these, or even these, they don't wear or break. And they can be used in the case of an emergency. Some of you may always have your paracord emergency bracelet, but you know, like I normally have one, but I'm not wearing it right now. And that is all well and good. But even in, the, in an office environment where maybe you can't wear your normal bracelet, maybe you can't wear this because it's considered as having a knife or because of the flint or one like this may just not be appropriate if you are in a more formal atmosphere. Even one like this may get some dirty looks. You can have paracord in your shoes and that'll give you thir about 33, if not more inches per shoe or five and a half feet of cord. If you wear a work boot, you could, that could give you at least another 40, or give you 45 inches or more, depending on the type of boot. This is more like a hiking boot, so that would be about 45 inches. Some go up to as much as 55 inches per shoe. So why is this important? Well, let me tell you, it's not a common thing, but abduction of women young and old is not uncommon. In some areas in the United States and around the world, young women are abducted and forced into the sex trade. We don't like talking about it, but that is a, a realistic thing. In Mexico and Latin America, US citizens are known to have been abducted and held hostage in hopes of their employer or family paying a ransom. So, I can tell you from personal experience, when I went to Mexico, my company actually said, 
I could not leave the grounds of the hotel or the office I was going to. When I had employees that were going to El Paso, we had a strict rule that we could not send female employees because of abductions of, of women and being taken over into Mexico. These are harsh realities. They're not things that happen all the time, but they do happen. According to American Survival Guide, all one needs to do is take out your shoelaces, replace them with paracord, and then if you were to do that and you were be to be abducted, you would simply remove one that your uh, shoelaces from one eyelet, thread it, your shoelaces through your wrist if you're being held by zip ties, and using a bicycle motion while on your back, use it to cut and the zip tie so that you could escape. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna test that theory out. I am going to take paracord. This is actually paracord that I picked up. This is the stuff that comes from Dollar Tree. So you guys know that I was not a huge fan of Dollar Tree. It's workable, it's usable, but it's not great stuff. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace this standard cotton nylon shoestring that, you know, it looks decent, it looks usable, and I'm going to replace it with paracord. And we are going to try this out. I'm going to zip tie my hands together and we are going to see if I can truly cut myself out. Because further in the article, they say that this is possible with rope as well. I don't know how to tie myself up with rope, so I'm not into that. So, but what we are going to do is we're going to try the zip try, zip tr zip tie. We're going to see if a normal person like myself can do this. So, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to use this cheap dollar store stuff, lace up the shoes, and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see my hands are bound. I have replaced my shoestrings with paracord. This is the Dollar Tree 550 paracord. So what I'm going to do is untie my shoes, which, as you can see, is not the simplest thing. So the idea here is what you will do is you will take and you will try and fit that paracord through your bonds. Let me say this is easier said than done. trying to get it to go through. So I'm having to work it and try and roll it through and it just does not want to cooperate. So this is not something you could quickly do. So yeah, I finally got it through. And then I am somehow supposed to take this and tie a piece, two pieces together. So something to know is you're going to have to take the one piece and somehow work it through the back or 
You're gonna have to work it over the top. So that is, as I said, easier said than done. And uh, you may wind up with rope burns by the time it's all said and done. long piece through. Now I got to figure out how to tie that long piece there. So supposedly you can take that, you get a good knot together, make sure that it's not going to slip. Okay, so the idea is then you're, you're supposed to be able to do like this, keeping, and it cuts, it does cut, it does dig into your arms, as you can see, but I was able to cut through paracord, uh, with paracord, through the zip tie, and all said and done, minute, minute and a half, just by, uh, with the tie, uh, tying. Now, the whole process probably took me five minutes, but it is feasible. So, I was able to do it, and it did work. Now, the next question I am sure somebody will say or ask is, well, yeah, that's well, all well and good, but couldn't I do that with just a regular shoelace? Because you're really just using friction. So we're going to test that and find out. Now I'm going to say, I'm not going to, you can see my wrist, I'm not going to do it again, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zip tie around a vise and we'll record that and see how well it works. So here we have my regular zip tie. Let me move that up a little bit so you can see it. So my regular zip tie. Here are the shoelaces that I pulled from my shoes. So we're going to see if that actually works. So it did work. Now I will say that this is not, that is not professional grade zip tie, but it did work. So, would somebody need to go as far as using paracord? That's really going to be your call. So you can see it's possible, even with cheap paracord. Heck, with the thin zip ties, it'll even do it with a shoelace. Although, you can see where it started to actually rub and... Uh, it almost started to, it started to melt. The shoelace. So that tells me that uh, if this was a thicker zip tie, I don't think it would have worked. Whereas these show no sign. You can see a little bit here where it flattened out, but otherwise you see no sign of issue. It's not easy, but it is completely possible. This means that you and your family could all use paracord in a variety of shoes using different colors to allow everyone to personalize their shoes and match whatever color they want on their shoe. I mean, they make blue, they make black, Somebody wanted neon, you could do neon, white, pink, blue, whatever. 
while preparing for this, I did a little bit of research and I found that there are some personal protection trainers that recommend just this to their VIP clients and that there are many people in the intelligence field, CIA, Secret Service, FBI, etc., that use just this technique in both their professional and personal lives. So while no one wants to think about being abducted, a small change like this could be a lifesaver. So as far as a survival technique, I'm going to call this one true. It's difficult, but it is true. Maybe you don't need to do this every day. Maybe, though, if you are traveling overseas, this is something you would want to do. I don't want to make anybody paranoid, but it's something very cheap and easy a person could do, and it could save their life. So I'm going to have more of these coming up in the future. Um, if you guys have some ideas or survival tales that you've heard of, uh, things that you can supposedly do with Paracord that you want me to try and test, leave a comment or drop me a line. Otherwise, until next time, keep Paracording. Later.